the print soft cover. It's the digital launch of select non-fiction books that we are doing at soft cover. Today I have with me Professor Tarochan Shastri. He is an IIM Bangalore professor who's also been the former dean at the institute. And uh, today we are launching his book, The Essentials of Hinduism. And in fact, I am just uh, unveiling the book in front of me right now. There you go. The Essentials of Hinduism by Professor Trilochan Shastri. It's a Penguin India publication. Hello, sir. Welcome to the print. Thank you. So, um, for an IIM professor who's also, uh, you know, uh, had a degree from IIT Delhi, uh, who's mostly in management and academics in technical field, uh, to write a book on uh, Hinduism. And the book is Essentials of Hinduism, an Introduction to All the Sacred Texts. How did the choice come about for, for a professor? It, it looks like, a, uh, like an unusual cho choice of subject. So how did you come about this, uh, uh, you know, subject and uh, uh, that, that you should write a book on something like this? So I was always interested in this subject from childhood or early adolescence. Okay. So I've been reading this term for I have attended it since studying this good journal is on. Meeting various people, including Sarans and Sabasis. So it was kind of coming out of my ears, so I don't just put it down. Okay. Okay. And uh, does it have anything to do with the, uh, you know, the kind of environment that you grew up in, the, you know, uh, anything that uh, your parents or your siblings inspired the kind of interest in you? Since you said that it's an interest that you had from uh, uh, young days. No, my parents were, uh, my father wants to roll off that game street. And okay. But he was not a regal. He would attend okay. some religious function. My mother was just Mahlan. She used to attend. I will do some good job and what nothing watch. Okay. My brother is again then an atheist and agnostic. So okay. life and everything okay to this, but they gave a lot of pain and we went to what way like so this was an interest to me, so that's all. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Sir, uh, I read the book and it has a lot of uh, it has uh, uh, you know, basically breaking down, really broken down a lot of uh, complicated texts into simpler language. Uh, so I would, you know, I want to know from you, what is the kind of research that you did uh, to break down complicated texts into such simple uh, language and into, you know, smaller cha chapters for people to understand? Research is, um, I have to read the texts. Like to read the text and also read English translation. If there is a doubt, you go back to sunscreen. Yeah. And uh, so I need to be very sure that what is being signed is accurate. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there is always this nagging doubt that something you could make, uh, you know, slightly off. But I think so far, I've not been able to find anything which is I mean, there are some that close, but otherwise, it's okay. And in fact, many of the real premium was captured for me. The okay. idea was not to be any interpretation. Yeah. yeah, because there are so many wonderful books out there with super interpretations. Yeah. But you know, somehow I heard it that people have a need to know yeah. what the scriptures is as it is. Yeah. Okay. After English, of course, it's a win in Sanskrit, but most people don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I can make it as accurate as possible by going through the arguments and the work with you on the scripture and the translations and back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a process. Okay. And so uh, when you say that, you know, you've simplified texts, uh, these overcomplicated texts into a simple language, um, what was the whole purpose uh, behind writing this book? Was it, uh, did you want to do this because you wanted the younger generation to connect with it? Or, I mean, what was the idea behind this? Actually, uh, yeah, only, only partially agree with me that the texts are very complicated. According to me, they are not very complicated. Okay. Anybody can study them. On a text word, that can be did it. Italian is only Sanskrit. It's about more than that language. Then I'm not a master of Sanskrit, but I only know how to be able to uh, make sense of it. Okay. The motivation is that we pay the edges to the road for fun. Yeah. And I hope that uh, because you know, as a, a master, I am you know, generally reading so many people, 
I found that there is a lot of extremism. Okay. Probably it's always been there, but we have a very vague notions about it. Okay. They either haven't read the terms or they got something from somebody who told them something, mm. something from the internet. So I thought uh, they would be interested in knowing what the what it is in a simple and accurate way. Yeah. And while, yes, it is definitely for the younger people, I was amazed because I'm getting emails and full, you know, WhatsApp messages from people from Jupiter and all sorts of people. Okay. Uh, you know, you know, and I very much, you know, this is right. So it's a bit of people who are absolutely young also who have found it very interesting. Mm-hmm. So, I was saying, so when you say that uh, you found out during your uh, interactions with people that they have a very vague notion of Hinduism and they want to know more, what would you mean by saying vague notions? Would you like to elaborate on that? So for example, uh, some 75-80% of Indians grew up in uh, Hindu homes. Sure. Just like I did. Sure. Well, you know, what are the sacred texts? Mm. Tell me about sacred texts. Sure. You would never know. Sure. And you, you know, patients in the events of me are very intelligent guy. Yeah. And you ask him, what do that most sacred texts say here? So we have. They have some legal hero, that's it. And so, uh, but there is an interest. Yeah. Uh, you know, for example, the uh, most sacred texts are called the Shuti. The revered texts, the Shuti. Yeah. And they are a similar interior to Upanishads, which are part of the Vedas. Yeah. What do the Upanishads say? The fact that the Shuti is given the highest position in Hinduism is not known to many people. What does the Shuti say? They don't know. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of people in the West in Europe. Okay. Yeah, I was in the US. A lot of people in sure, Vedanta, Vedanta, they were, they were very much into it. They were very much into it. So, a lot of people have a very, I mean, there are many great scholars in India, I and mean, much better than me also. But the general people have very huge training as a board wooden. And then, of course, when we need any number of better texts, or much more, well, I would say better because I don't want to use that word better. But with people are much more well known and popular and much more rendered text than the Upanishads. And people do know what are some basic ideas of Bhagavad Gita know. But then there are so many texts Adama Shastra, Aspura, Maya, Zipi, Hrasal, and Rana, and Mahabharata, Vishishta, Vaita, Dvaita, and so on and so forth. You know, well, they're not the law. Upamedas, Vedangas, the six Vedas, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, all of them, uh, most of them are considered saying, I have to buy art. Oh, my name is Preston. I don't know the whole thing. I have heard from the same thing. They came to be back from Hertz. The French aren't just a very good uh, thing, but from random strangers, you know, nowadays in the digital world, they can uh, send you a message, you know, friend you or some people and send you an email. Uh, okay. Seems to be something that all this for it to come upon it. And it's very good. I think all of these things that so often that I was able to read and so on. Uh, and it stays with you as a reference book. It's not that you're editing, so not aware. You keep it on, then once in two, three years, maybe you refer something again, that sort of. And I'm also teaching a course. So, okay. uh, fair. So, so, if I have to have authored for this course. Related to this, sir, related to uh, Hinduism, the study of Hinduism? Yes, it's called the Introduction to Hindu Philosophy. And okay. it has, in a certain sense, the book came out of that course because I just started teaching here. And then okay. I said, why not write a book when there are a lot of it? So. Okay. Okay. Sir, uh, you spoke about the feedback that you got from people, uh, I mean, across India, I, I, I'm assuming. Uh, is there also some kind of criticism because, uh, I, you know, uh, there is a lot of talk around Hinduism and uh, how hardliners are kind of trying to make the religion look um, more stricter than it already is. So, I mean, would you say that there is also some kind of criticism around uh, you've received around the book? But what the answer is that this book has nothing to do with uh, contemporary society and politics. 
Or there are so many Muslims, so uh, we I have one of any religion, including Hinduism, <laughs> which I spend by what is going on around us. <laughs> but everybody accepts now uh, without any hesitation, I'll be angered. I swear to God, there's a lot of very little of this battery separate. So that's a and we'll do a little book, so I don't know if maybe there's some from it the end of the book, but of course I don't, you know, spend my time going through every comment that we stand. But the one band come on, same solution, they're very nice. Okay, understood. Nice. Sir, um, uh, would you like to highlight any particular uh, uh, chapter or anything particular from the book that, uh, uh, you know, you, you thought was very uh, interesting to you or something that was like a revelation for you as well? Uh, something uh, you know that you did a lot of research on, particularly something that you did a lot of research on. You know, I, to be very honest, uh, I learned a lot while reading the book because I wanted to read and read the whole thing. But I think my and say I've actually quite a lot of former learned people who are in now, you know, so you're spending you're spending in Google. So okay. in that sense, you know, but you know, I was surprised to know that there are sixty guitars. There's a very okay. recent radio and we didn't need the other is never boom data that is out of I don't know I about there's a reality man so on and so forth. Then you're only be dying we are not but I'm in there. But oh, the ideas are exactly the same. Nobody's saying anything different. Yes. So yes. in that sense, now it was very nice because some of the same things are explained in a different than yes. but the ideas are all the same. So in that sense I didn't find it uh, anything I think one way to ritual and science symbolism and you don't know most of it is it is a hard here I am here is this world yeah. how do I live a happy life and those get you but what we done with 34 and so for that for most people and then of course we have to know that we say that if you are devoted to God that was for you and one thing that reinforced by reading this book is that all these things you know, while there are different streams of sure. Hinduism, sure. uh, you know, there is the path of knowledge, the path of devotion, the path of action or karma yoga, the path of meditation or gamma yoga, the new yoga, and many variations among all these. Uh, they all are you know, we to the scene. But that again comes out if you read the scripture more carefully. It seems, you know, already very to you, but all of them are saying, yeah, although to the waste of the in the past, right? <laughs> and they say, if you like this, you follow that part. If you like this, you follow that part. As long as you're sincere, all parts are good. So that is when clear in the news. You can have that about in the century, a great saying, Sri Ramakrishna. He said, I'm going on a Jadur Matta Dur Bhakt. He has any faith, so many parts. Because he practiced those things himself. Of the dreams, and he won't get the wrong thing to say. So, I follow around the scripture on Sisters as anything. So, in that sense, uh, essentially, then I'm in me. Sir, so would you say, being a professor, uh, an academic, you have uh, scientifically and factually dealt with the book? Like you said, it's not a, a comment on the contemporary society, it is whatever has existed, and you put it in a simplified manner. Correct. That's true. It is uh, very much based on the scriptures. Of course, I have read uh, some of the modern sages and saints, particularly Rana Krishna, Vivekananda, Ramana Maharshi, or the Tulsa Fool, that went and there are a few others who are not so famous. So I definitely read uh, their singings and writings, but they're all so beautifully tallied with the scripture. I don't find any difference between all. So uh, in that sense, uh, yeah, it is. You know, I don't know what is scientific. Scientific means one definition of scientific is that which can be replicable. And if the scripture says something, you do steps one, two, three, then you can also get to the same point. You just follow that. Now, if you, is the methodology for running a marathon scientific? If you say it is scientific, then the methodology for Following the scriptural injunctions for leading a better life here and now is also scientific. Sure. Then, so, um, my, I mean, not only mine, but a lot of people's personal experience that it works. Sure. 
um i would uh, you know not want to discuss too much of contents on the book because i want the readers to read it since it's such an interest interesting subject sir uh, one thing i want to know from you since you are into academics uh, do you think that the uh, study of religion in india is given the kind of uh, a serious treatment that uh, it is given in the west because uh, 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 there are uh, you know departments of theology department of religion in you know cities abroad uh, do you think that happens in india is it taken seriously i think uh, there are some uh, departments in some of the universities in india which are there banaras and banaras in india and some other universities also okay but <laughs> But in the United States, uh, there is a school of uh, religion, practically, or something. Most of the major universities, and they not only study Hinduism, they study Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, and everything they study. Yes. And uh, do we need to do more of that? Yes, we need to do more of that than that. But you know, there are two dangers that are trying to that. One is that the West and the has a particular view of Hinduism and Buddhism. Some of their scholars are very good. It's not that all of them have misunderstood the skin. But some of them do, I mean, because they do all the background and they, and the uh, other Italian, uh, which we find uh, now in the post colonial India, as we do we have to talk about that, is that, you know, there is a great eagerness to somehow establish hmm. that our religion is very good. And our religion is the greatest, and so okay. on. But this scholarly study is not like that. What do we study? What does the scripture say? Let me first understand it. If it's possible, practice it. Let me imbibe it. Then let me write about it, teach about it, so on. But simply, you know, with the agenda for whatever, uh, is not uh, the, a very nice little book. Yet. So that danger we have to guard against. If we. People are just trying to interpret the scriptures rather than uh, understanding them first and uh, putting it out what's uh, exactly there, factually there in the scriptures. No, every individual has a right to interpret the scriptures. So, you know, it's not like nobody has a right. But mm -hmm. the problem is there are thousands and thousands of interpretations written. In the Bhagavad Gita alone, there might be some 10,000 translations if you take all the language. I'm not exaggerating. And many of them are excellent. But what we find is that those who try to practice those teachings, sure. so like an example, some of the sadhus and sannyasis who are well educated, mm -hmm. uh, who not only are well educated in no Sanskrit and English uh, and are scholarly, but they also try to put those uh, teachings into practice in the day to day life. They hardly ever misinterpret um, the teachings, they give it very accurately. But okay. now they're, they're in the fact that, you know, I used to work in Bourbon Sachs and I came back to India for the law of my country, well, I was going into Hinduism, and I'm going to put it in some 21st century modern context. With, so it's very good. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But is it accurate? Is it are people getting a distorting view? So yeah. I'm sure we want to avoid this book. Just this is what the scripture says. Adi Aapuji. Whatever interpretation you want, you put it on your own. But this is what the scripture says. So I will avoid it on interpretation. Okay. And uh, so would you say the interpretations that have happened currently in the form of uh, uh, books that are currently available in the market, do you think uh, they are uh, inaccurate? Do you think they're off script? They don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, see the reality? Actually, you know, I do. I mean, I've seen uh, many of the books, you know, they pop up on various websites, but I've not read many of them because they said, in fact, we read them because we read the scripture. That I've done. And the other thing is, you know, we have a very uh, limited view when we talk about these issues about why we, why lifetime, how we do things, so this is what is happening. This is a 5,000, 6,000 year old religion. It been continuing for another 5,000 years. So many things happen over the uh, Years and decades. And so many people have written so many things that even this book should pass. Why would it not? We say they don't know. But the scripture is a tunnel. Right. So we might go let people try, but you know all the excess of information of waiting and even if some of it is 
slightly inaccurate, is a slight cause of concern. Okay. Because, you know, it can be take whatever is available. <coughs> but that's not that's not you know, nothing to do with the book. The book is has a just yeah. Okay. Wonderful, sir. Thank you for having this chat with us. And to the viewers, uh, you can go check out uh, Professor Tarochan Shastri's book, The Essentials of Hinduism. It's a Penguin India publication. Thank you so much for giving us the time, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.